I was recently given the task by a relative of setting up a basic CCTV system that could see into their back garden and provide them with a live video feed of what was going on even in the dark. Now, I have reviewed some IP cameras in the past, but of course these rely on the person having a Wi-Fi router and an internet connection. This person doesn't have that, or at least the Wi-Fi router part anyway. So an IP camera would be no use in this situation. Now, when I reviewed those IP cameras, someone cleverly pointed out that they're not exactly wireless because, of course, you need to plug them into the power. Now, even though that's blindingly obvious, it did get me thinking, if I'm attaching a wire to this thing anyway, I might as well just send the video over a wire as well and be done with it so that's exactly what I'm going to do now before I go into this in any more detail I just want to point out if you're some sort of CCTV expert you're the kind of guy that starts most of your sentences with well actually I think you'll find this isn't the video for you this is a video for your average chap in the street that doesn't really know about this subject someone like me I didn't know about this until I started playing around with this stuff now the first thing I want to point out when you look at the cameras on Amazon for example you'll see most of them have a bit of a spec box at the bottom there and there's some things that you might not understand in there so let's go through those things. TVL refers to the television lines. It's a measurement of the quality of the sensor in the camera. Supposedly the higher the number then the better the image quality but it doesn't necessarily work out that way. I'll explain more in a moment. Generally most CCTV cameras are 700 or 800 TVL and that's fine. The BNC is a connector plug that cameras like this use to connect up to your video playback device. It's an uncommon plug to get on something in your house but it is something that's quite common in the broadcast industry and you can convert it to something that's more standard for use with your television. IR cut is a filter that clicks in front of the sensor during the daytime so that it looks normal, but at night it pops out of the way when it senses that it's dark and it enables the camera to see in the dark using infrared light. And the infrared light is provided by the LEDs that are on the camera and quite often they state how far the camera can illuminate in terms of meters. But that number tends to be pretty much made up as far as I can make out. A brief bit of advice, in my opinion, it's not worth spending extra money just to get a high TVL number. You'll see cameras advertised with numbers like 1200 TVLs. You won't be able to see the difference in quality between that and a 700 TVL camera because it's all sent down a composite video cable. And those things can't resolve those higher resolutions. Everything's going to look pretty much the same. Now let me talk you through the things I bought. First off, this camera, £19. That's a bit of a bargain, isn't it, if it works? And then, of course, I got the wire to connect it up. You've got different lengths you can pick from, and it doesn't cost too much either. It's got the connectors on the end already. Now, I'll show you how these connectors work. So you'll see we've got a red one and a yellow one here. The red one's for power, and the yellow one is for video. That's your BNC plug on the end of there, by the way. Now, at the other end, we've also got a power plug rather than a socket on this end. And then we've got the BNC plug there as well, which is the same as one on the other end. Now, first thing is we need a power supply. Now, this is the power supply that's for the UK, of course. You buy these separately to the camera usually, and they're always the same. They're always 12 volt, 1 amp. I say always. All the ones I've seen are anyway. So they're all 12 volt, 1 amp, and they've got the same size barrel plug on the other end. Now the video cable, that's your BNC plug there. Now you could get an adapter and sometimes these come in the box or the bag with the wire. And that enables you to connect the BNC plug up to your standard RCA phono type plug that you might still have in your television. Most televisions still have one of those in the back or the side somewhere. And you could connect it up with that. Although I decided I'm going to go with something that connects up straight to the BNC plug because I'm not going to be plugging this into a television. I'm going to use a monitor. I ended up buying this particular monitor. It's the only one I could find that had a BNC plug on it. It mentions it there on the box particularly. It's like designed really as a CCTV camera displayer. Now this comes with the same type plug and the same size barrel plug and it's still uh, 1 amp 12 volts so they're interchangeable with the ones on the camera. So let's just get it out of this bag and have a look. So as you can see there it's 4-3 ratio screen. Most CCTV cameras haven't gone widescreen. There's your BNC plug at the top there. We've got your usual video and then audio left and right sockets on there. By the way, these CCTV cameras don't do audio. They just plug into that video BNC socket up there, so there's no audio plug-in. And then this little socket here on this particular one lets me plug in a VGA monitor if I wanted. It's 800 by 600 resolution, I think, this screen, so it's not bad. A little fold-out stand on the bottom there as well. This thing cost me 50 quid, by the way. There's links at the end of the video for all these different things. So that's my monitor, but I could have used this one. I picked up some of these. I found them on eBay. It amused me. A little old Sony monitor 
connectors that we used in broadcast look at the size of this thing it's like a battleship but it does have the bnc connectors on the back you can switch it between 69 and 43 ratio these things cost me well i got this one three of them for uh, just under a hundred pounds i had this idea of setting them up in my house uh, you can see the model number there at the bottom left i had an idea of sort of setting them up having it look like the nostromo or maybe an old uh, breakfast tv kids show where they used to have televisions behind them and they're sort of doing a bit of broadcasting i might use these in future videos just in the background or something but i think they're really nice with the glass screen i'm starting to get a bit of nostalgia for the old crts anyway back to this stuff the other thing that i'm not going to show you because i haven't got one is one of these recorders this particular recorder on Amazon, you can see it's 50 quid. Uh, to that, you need to add a hard drive to get it to work. They don't come with those in them, but that records the video signal. You put that between the monitor and the camera, and it can record up to four channels at once and also stream it over the internet. And I'm looking in the comments of that, some chap said he got a 500 gig drive in it. On that, he got 16 days, 24-7 video on four cameras. So that's pretty good. I presume it's low frame rate, but you get the idea. Very easy to set up, I believe, as well. It doesn't cost too much, but I haven't got one of those. Uh, what I have got is this camera here. So let's just get it out of the box briefly. This is the one that cost me like £19. Let's see what you get. Well, there's your camera. As you can see, LEDs on the front to light things up. Little green thing at the bottom there. That's the day-night sensor to switch on that uh, filter. We've got a tripod screw hole at the uh, back and on the bottom there. Um, now, those are tripod size, your standard tripod size. However, they're a bit shallower than tripod screw threads they just have a bit less uh, sort of screw on them as you can see there so that goes in there and the idea is you screw that in there you got a ball joint that you can loosen up on the top and get the camera how you want that's if you're going to stick it on a wall or something they're always a bit flimsy those things i don't think they make them particularly well but that's the one that they threw in the box with this one and you get these screw one the raw plugs and things to screw into your wall there I've just stuck it on this little uh, Gorilla Pod thing here, just so you can see it on the table. So this is how you connect a BNC plug. You put it on, you twist it round, it locks it in like that. Then you've got the power plugged into there. So that's the uh, cable plugged in at the camera. And you need to put some tape around that or something if you were going to put it outside to keep it waterproof, of course. You don't want water getting into that, but they all have this little cable like that hanging off the back of the camera. And then the other end of that, I think I've got five metres here or so, Plugging in that uh, power supply that I showed you before that goes into that uh, barrel plug there. And then uh, that cable goes into the monitor at the top here. And we're all ready to go. So plugged it in, as you can see there, we've got a live feed. Uh, we use two plug sockets, of course, one for the camera, one for the television. It's good seeing a live feed on these because it's very smooth. Now let's just switch off the lights to show you what the day and night looks like, or the interior, I suppose, and then darkness. You can see there the infrared illumination comes on, a bit like a bomb going off. It seems to be uh, getting a bit of a hot spot in the middle on this one. It's not lighting up uh, all the way around the edges. And as you can see, when you put something near it, it just lights that up. But that's how infrared works. The lights come on in the dark. One thing I don't like though, these herringbone patterns, that's what they're called when you get these kind of, uh, you know, these bendy patterns. Now that apparently is down to interference, I believe, I've been reading up since. I thought it was at the time, but there was nothing that I was, I took it outside, I had all, everything switched off and it was getting interference. So, I got two more cameras, I thought, well maybe there's something a bit funny with that camera. It only seems to do it in the dark. So I've got this little camera here, this sort of silver one, you can see, similar design. Quite nice, this uh, aluminium, I'm going to say it my way. Uh, screw threads, top and bottom. Again, same connectors on the back of that. The good thing about CCTV is they're all pretty much the same, all the connectors and things. Uh, interchangeable, very easy to set up once you know what to get. This one comes with a little mount you have to make up yourself, screw it together with an Allen key. Bit of a weird mount, that one. And this final one here, no mount in the box on this one, so you have to get it separately. But look at that, what a weird looking thing. It's got the infrared illuminators either side of the lens on this one, different kind of configuration i had to buy my own mount for that one i thought i'll get a separate mount anyway just so i've got one in if i need one so let's have a look how both these cameras perform because i was a little bit concerned about that wavy line thing so we'll try this one indoors and you see there at the bottom on the pi cage yeah i'm still getting those herringbone patterns so in the end i thought i bet it's the wires not the cameras Although the cameras were a little bit different from one another. So I've got these wires and I've got a couple of different ones from different places. They weren't uh, particularly good quality, but they seem to be standard. I got this particular wire from CPC, which seemed a better quality one. It had those little sort of bits on the cable to, to reduce interference. I believe it or not, yes, it did work. So the cable is important. Get a good quality cable. But now I've got three CCTV cameras. Let's call them White, Silver and Johnny 5. And uh, let's compare them with one another because uh, since I've got three, we might as well do a bit of a comparison thing. So this is the first one I got. 
that's what it looks like this is a video out of the window it's not a freeze frame i've actually got this running into a, a capture device uh, which might be affecting the video quality but i don't think it is it looked pretty much like that now as you can see that's nice and sharp I and mean, it's uh, sort of standard definition but you could see if someone was jumping into your garden and doing something unusual you get a good quality image of it um, remember i'm using this for capturing animals or, or filming animals in the dark so the nighttime footage is more important perhaps to me than the daytime and that's what that looks like which is all right bit of a hot spot again so it seems to go dark towards the edges but not as bad as it was inside the house uh, obviously you need a big distance to light these ir illuminators up with um, it likes to sort of spread it over a, an area but still a bit dull around the edges on that one so let's uh let's switch over we'll try the silver camera uh this sort of aluminum thing aluminium one uh now that one you know what the video quality is, isn't it's just a tiny bit worse i think but the frame, field of view is the same um this one actually produced less herringbone patterns even with the decent cable than the other one did on that monitor of course you're not looking at it on a monitor now you're looking at the uh, video capture but as you can see still pretty decent quality let's flip over that's night time bit more of a spread on the leds there i think you can see it's a little bit more illuminated on the left one thing i have to mention about this this was uh, really really dark i wouldn't be able to see that bench or even those stairs at all the steps at the front of the chairs at the front or anything uh, with my naked eye it was, it was just blackness and a few lights behind from the houses now finally let's uh, give johnny five a go and see how he copes well that looks absolute crap doesn't it that's awful a really i don't know washed out blurry um image so let's uh let's see what he looks like at night time now his ir leds actually do seem to light things up even brighter you can see all the way across there it's, it's lit everything up so those ir leds are pretty good uh you can still see the brickwork so it's not kind of blown things out so the leds are good but look at this uh, image quality again we'll just flip back and forth between them so that's johnny five that's the white one that was like a, a massive difference look at the field of view as well very narrow you can't see much but on that one you can so really i'm afraid johnny five is rubbish uh also another issue black dot on the sensor there that you can see and you might be able to see it on the brickwork here at the bottom left as well uh that was inside it somewhere i couldn't clean it off the front of the lens so really that was a waste of time that particular camera so we're down between these two now the white and the silver there's very little to choose between them any difference in the angles and things are just due to me putting the camera in a slightly different position on each shot now at night time i think the silver one might just edge it but you, i'm not it really don't know i mean the benches look a bit better on the white one but really I've, I've ended up picking the silver one because my uh the garden that this is going into is a lot longer than the one that i'm shooting it in there this is my garden this is not where it's going it needs to shoot uh have a brighter light to shoot even further back so i think the silver one's going to be the right one for the job that i'm doing with it now looking at the leds on them that's what the white one looks like in the dark that's what the silver one looks like in the dark and there's another reason i didn't pick johnny five is because i'm pretty sure that would creep out any animals that were in this back garden the, the ones we're trying to sort of see in the dark like foxes and hedgehogs and cats and things and those kind of things right so that's the one i picked i ended up picking this silver one but to be honest there wasn't much between that and the white model but they're both about 20 quid anyway now the other thing that turned up right before i finished this video was this ground spike i've been waiting for this for a while it's a metal spike on the top of it we've got a tripod screw mount with a rubber plate on there and this is perfect for putting on one of these cameras and just giving it to the person i'm giving it to just to shove in a flower pot or something and film in the garden and then bring it in when they don't want it outside so that particular camera you see there about 23 quid the other one 20 quid i'll show you all the different things that i've uh, been demonstrating during the course of this video on the screen now but i've got links to all these in the video description uh, there'll be a link up there it'll take you through to my blog and if you want any of these things you can click through from there and get hold of them although i'd recommend getting the decent wire from cpc rather than one of those cheap ones that i was uh, demonstrating it with anyway that's my brief look at cctv i hope you found this interesting entertaining or just not boring but anyway that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching <laughs>